Those fibers start out as large glass tubes. First, workers unwrap the tubes. Then they submerge them in a corrosive bath of hydrofluoric acid. That removes any oil residues. Then they set a tube into each end of a lathe. As the tubes spin, they're heated with a hydrogen-oxygen flame. When the glass turns white, it's getting close to hitting peak temperature. At 2,000 degrees Celsius, the two tubes fuse together. They put this new longer tube onto another lathe. As the tube spins, they inject a mixture of chemical gases inside, while a traversing burner heats everything up. The gas mixture contains liquid forms of silicon, an abundant chemical element found in nature, and germanium, a chemical element similar to tin that's used as a semiconductor in transistors and other electronic devices. As the gases heat, they undergo a chemical reaction that leaves a white soot on the inside of the glass tube. The heat fuses the soot, forming what will eventually become the core of the optical fiber. The glass tube itself will form the fiber's covering. When there's enough fused soot, they turn up the heat until the soot itself turns into glass. Then they heat the glass tube enough to soften it, as well as the new glass inside. The intense heat eventually makes the tube collapse on itself to form a solid rod. The internal structure of the optical fiber has been achieved. But it's in the form of a big bulky rod called a preform, so the next step is to thin it out. First, they excise the preform from the uncollapsed section of the glass tube. Then, they install it vertically into the drawing tower, which will draw out the final shape. The drawing tower's oven heats one end of the preform to 2,000 degrees Celsius. The glass softens. Gravity helps pull it down like honey dripping from a spoon. Then, using a glob of glass as a weight, they stretch the soft glass and keep stretching it until they formed a thin glass fiber. A series of pulleys measures the tension on the fiber as it's being drawn. A special monitor makes sure the fiber's precisely the right diameter, 125 micrometers. That's about an eighth of a millimeter thick. Then the fiber passes through UV lamps that bake on an acrylic coating to protect against dust and other contaminants. Finally, the fiber is rolled onto a drum. From here, it's either shipped out as is or put into a cable. Fiber optic cables are expensive to produce, but they're smaller and lighter than traditional copper cables. They carry more information and need fewer repeaters to keep the signal from deteriorating. And unlike copper cables, they're immune to electromagnetic interference. They're also hard to tap without being detected. And all this is made possible by a complicated process based on a very simple principle, light traveling through glass.